Welcome to Higher Presence. I have a great show for you today. My guest is a, an executive coach. She has worked with uh, multi-million dollar businesses and bringing them to new heights and all across the country. She's a speaker, author, and she's done a number of uh, different programs around the country teaching people how to uh, manage the transition. Higher Presence is all about helping job seekers become job finders. So my guest today, Deanna Frazier, is uh, going to talk to us about, especially in her life, which is the transition. That's what they call it nowadays, isn't it, Deanna? The transition, exactly right. They don't call it unemployed, they don't be call it let go, they don't call it anything else but transition. It's a great word. Yeah, it's a great word. Now, you have some uh, extreme experience in that area. You, tell me a little bit about your story where you, you actually owned a a company that did career planning? I did. Well, I started in the seminar business where I owned the public seminar that helped people just create a better life through behaviors, changing their behaviors. And that transitioned into a career consulting company, which I built. I had seven offices for about eight years. Transitioned out of there for lots of different reasons and went on the road as a consultant. Not a good idea. And I did that for about six years. It was a great career no life so it's you know having balance and having a life is very important to people and particularly now part of what I help people do is create a life plan and talk about having balance so I needed balance so I became a virtual certified coach I went to coach you took two uh, two years of studies and recreated my business again into now more about 70 percent virtual 30 percent workshops and seminars so yeah, it's been, a, it's been interesting because the kind of people I work with are in transition. And guess what, Pat? We all are at some level, at some time. The relationship transition, <laughs> career transition, life transition. The biggest value that we have with people is to help them to understand who they are so that when they go forward, they're going from a place of strength and not just jumping from getting a job to some, another job. It's so I do a lot of work around helping them define their personal foundation so they're really grounded in what their true values are. Now, I say that, and at the same time, I have to be cognizant. Some people have to have a job, and, they, and it's all about finances. If, and if that's the case, that's what we do. And we do a whole bunch of work around getting that done as quickly as possible. If they have the time to really explore who they are and what they really want, it's wonderful. And sometimes I can do yeah, both at the same time. I, I, I try to get people to understand that they are now, regardless of what they did before, they are now an entrepreneur because now you're selling a service. So like it or not, you're wearing a hat that's called, I'm in business for myself and I am now the product. So it's very important that, that as a product, you really understand what you're selling, which are the benefits for why someone should hire you. And those benefits are based on the achievements and accomplishments you had in the past. It's not what you did, it's why it mattered with what you did. So I help people to look at you know what that is, and you'd be surprised all levels, Pat, how difficult that is, because we're not used to saying every day I made a difference in this company. It's just not how we're programmed. We go to work, we go home. We go to work, and we go home. But at the end of the day, it had to have a reason. So I really spend a lot of time helping people understand why it mattered and what they accomplish. We either make money, save money, or make someone else's life easier so they make money or save money. And once they get that, then they, the confidence increases and they have something real in the way of benefits. I've done it for them, I can do it for you. Right. So Absolutely. what you're saying is, is looking at what are the solutions that they have inside of them to the problems that the employer is looking for. Absolutely, it's yeah. now salespeople. They're entrepreneurs and they're selling and their product is who they are, is the service, and they now have to do the R&D <laughs> on that product so that when they go forward they know exactly who they are and why mm -hmm. they have there are many benefits, of course, but two of them that comes to mind immediately when you ask that question is that we help clients get in touch with their own passion and their own true gifts. So it ties into really what they want, not what they think they have to have. That's the so it's thing. passion and true gifts. Yes, yeah. And, you know, again, they said earlier, it's about that personal foundation, really figuring out who you are and what it is that you really want. And usually that passion will be there. 
if you have, if you give yourself the opportunity to ferret it out, you know, we, I do little things by having them unclutter their, their house and their lives, and you'd be surprised how all of a sudden the energy changes and, and they feel differently and they view their life and their world differently. So that's one of the things. The second thing is to really be sure that you are ready for this journey, and that's self-care. That's what are you eating, how much are you sleeping, how are you exercising, mental, physical, emotional togetherness. We've got to get buffed. We're going on a journey here. And, and it's not just about getting a job. It's about getting rid of the stress and finding the right job, um, making it a happy journey. So you have to feel good about everything that you're doing because there will be some rejection, and sometimes that doesn't feel so good. But if you're ready for whatever is next, you can handle well, almost see, anything. I'll tell you, it, well, you just made me think of it. I, I wrote a book several years ago that had, it didn't look like it had anything to do with the kind of work that I was doing in my traditional business. It was geared towards re-entering the single world after being married. And so most people say, what were you thinking? But you know, I was very passionate about it. I was very excited about it because I knew there was a tremendous need. I had experienced it myself. And people were for always asking me, how did you do that? How, how did you make fun out of dating when you're, I won't say how old, but when you're older and more mature? And I said, well, because you can. So I wrote a book. And, and out of that came all of this publicity and some wonderful activities, and I had a great time. Never would have happened if I didn't tap into that feeling that I could do this. This is part of my life. This is part of my message. So again, it's take a look at what you have to give to the world and go isn't about it. how to find a date, it's how to be one, how to be a good date. And so it all goes back to, by the way, um, lunches, uh, interviews, are, are interviews. That's all it is. <laughs> Dating is interviewing. And it's, it's just a date. So if you get rejected at a job, you want a job and you get rejected, or you have a date and it doesn't work, uh, just keep going on. You know, it's no big deal. It's just another day in time. <laughs> so it's all the same philosophy. I never yes, thought much about dating employers. <laughs> I, thought that's, I thought that's illegal in some states, isn't it? <laughs> it's, not, it's not what you want to do. It's just that it's the same concept. It's all about transitioning and, and, and not make, taking it so seriously. Now again, if there's a real money issue, then things have to be looked at a little differently. And I don't want to discount the fact that many clients have tremendous needs right now. And if we do that, if we have to do that, that's what we do. But at the same time, I always encourage them to build that foundation that can lead yeah. to other One things. One of the things, Pat, is that we have them take a look at what is the most likely place that you'll be hired based on exactly what you did. It may not be what you want to have right now, but if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. You have to do whatever it takes to get that that piece has to be taken care of. It's hard to be creative and be happy and do all this wonderful thing that I described if you're hurting for money. So that has to be taken care of. So even if it's just temporary or if it's just several temporary positions where you can take care of business at home financially and then continue to, to go on your quest of finding the right position. So that's really the most important. That's probably the only thing that's important is get something now. Well, and to I, take and I know that for a lot, of, a lot of people, that means stepping down a bit, doesn't it? Sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. But if it's temporary and if it's just a mindset that it's income producing, it isn't like, it doesn't reflect on who I am as a person. It's just what I have to do right now. So it's all about that, that, that we are not just one facet. We have careers, we have relationships, we have uh, things that we do for social life, that we do for uh, keeping balance. We have a whole bunch of things that we do to make us whole people. And all of them have to fit so that we can create a life that works according to our values. Because if we're off on any one of those, we're not 100% in sync with who we want to be. So a life plan includes all of those different areas. So now I have a career. Now maybe my relationships aren't working. So I have to get that relationship right or get another one that might be right. I mean, things, things have to change constantly so that we're complete. And it's, it takes, it's an, it's, it doesn't happen overnight, quite frankly, depending on what's going on with some people. I mean, I'm working with a couple of clients now that their career is really moving forward. It's just a question now, what's the next level? Uh, they're employed, what's the next level? Where do I go? But there's some things at home, and there's things that are off kilter in other parts of their life, physically, in other ways, that we're working on, so that when that move is made, they're ready for it because at least I do a thing called, what are you tolerating? 
and a list of tolerations. And it's amazing the little things that people have that annoy them that they ignore until it's built up like a swarm of mosquitoes. You know, one or two things out of kilter are not a big deal, but a swarm of mosquitoes can cause a lot of damage. So we look at all of the things that may not be absolutely perfect in one's life and, and work so on it. So that's about, about the career. It's about your relationship. It's about your finances. It's about your social life. It's about your recreational life. What do you do for fun? It's about your physical well-being. So it's all of those spiritual well-being. It's, it's everything that makes up the individual. And also self-care is very important. I, what I have found that when people are under stress, the first thing that stops is their own self-care. They eat badly. They're not sleeping right. They're not working out. They're not doing things that they would do ordinarily. And those things create stress. So you have this cycle. It's almost like a squirrel cage. Um, they'll drink more, they'll smoke more, they'll do things that don't serve them at all because they're under stress. All of that causes more stress. So right. it's just kind of a continuous cycle. So something has to stop, and it's usually the, the self-care has to get improved, and the behaviors that aren't serving us have to change so the stress gets diminished. So you can see the forest for the trees. You can see the difference between the job that I think I need and the job that so I need. So how are you doing today? <laughs> That's right. I mean, How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing okay. It doesn't take a big metric. Okay. So no. Okay. I get it. That's not working. Let's work on okay. that. <laughs> that's that's really good. I mean, I, I'm an Aggie and I need it that simple, you know? Um, well, one of the things that a coach is learned to do, especially the kind of coaching I do, is listening. I hear things that aren't said, quite frankly, and that actually scares me sometimes because when I came, went into coaching, in 99, I was a talker, a teller, a seller, a speaker, a trainer, and all of a sudden I had to stop talking. I will tell you very quickly, I hired a coach, and the first thing she said to me is, okay, you find a spot that's comfortable at home, and you put up a sign that says, uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the clue. You have to listen, <laughs> and when you listen, you don't have to. You so know. I want to get into a little bit more about um, the, the value of hiring someone like you. I mean, and who works best with Deanna? The ideal client is somebody who wants um, less of what they don't have and more of what they do have. Does that make any sense? It's people who are just not happy where they are and ready to make a move for whatever that reason. And they don't have to be miserable. They just have to be ready and willing to do the work. You know, wanting something to change. I mean, you can want to lose weight and not go to the gym because you're not willing to do it and nothing will happen. So they're really willing to take themselves on and make a significant change in their life, either from a place of that they have to because they're now unemployed or they're ready to look beyond where they are as to, the, to the next role, which is really an ideal situation. So, and someone who likes having fun because I like, you know, some humor. I, I don't, it doesn't have to be a dreadful situation that we're entering. And someone who's, you know, again, who's serious and has some background that they're bringing to the table that we can work with, quite frankly. And I tend to coach from where they are, by the way. It doesn't sound that the way I'm speaking, I'm very directive, but I really do start with where they are and what they want. One of the questions I always ask a client is that, did you know that I, I stand for you and not your goals? And they'll say, well, what does that mean? And I, and I say, well, what that means is you may tell me that you want to be someplace in three months and that's fine with me, whatever you say. However, if you're not going in that direction by s month two, I will remind you, do we change the goal or do we get back on track? Because the goal is not where I'm at. I'm at you getting what you want. So I take a very different approach. I'm not, I'm not geared to my saying, your life will work better if you do what I tell you. That is I, not I've told people that I'm not to do you good, not do you in. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's, you know, I that's get right. that. It's, it's really trying to, to, to help them get where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And they've got to be willing to invest. Let's face it, you, you've got to be willing to invest in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Help me with this, Deanna. Have you ever run into folks that they wanted your service, they even were willing to pay for it, but they, were, they, they really didn't feel worthy of the change you could create. Yeah. Or they could create. Well, yes. Yeah, right. It's yeah. really them. Yeah, it. absolutely. And so either um, they stop coaching or I fire them. Yeah, because I can't, you can't pull someone through coaching. They have to really 
be willing to do what it takes. If they're looking at this, how could you encourage somebody to believe in themselves and know that, that they are worth it? We do a bunch of work as far as assessments. I mean, they really get very clear. Uh, you, you know, the beginning part is all about them deciding who and what, what they are and what they want. And so they'll get it or not. But most of the most of the time they do, and, and they go, "Aha! This is absolutely right." I mean, I've had three clients over the, since '99 that actually became coaches. Now that's such a compliment to me. Uh, I had a woman that was an executive EVS that is now has a coaching practice like I do. What a compliment! What a compliment! That is. Yeah, she made a complete change, left, and uh, it, was, it was about three years later that she left and started her own coaching practice. So. You know, we don't always know where it's going to go, and sometimes just from the questions that I could ask them, they'll begin to, you know, discover things about themselves that they didn't know before. So that's really part of what coaching does, and what I've been trained to do is really help them ferret out from themselves what it is they want, even if they don't know or coming in. How do you want people to connect to you today? I have a website that you mentioned a couple of times. It's www.deannafraser.com. Uh, you can email me, and that's at d at deannafraser.com. Is that like D-E-E? D-E, -E? -E, yeah. And my phone number is 972-248-9084. Very good. I'd so love to hear from you. Connect to Deanna. I know that if you do, um, get ready, because you are entering a transition. If you're willing and you want to reach the other side, she can.